Hello, thanks and welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Grumman saying Happy New Year. Hundreds of residents on St. Croix came out to fill their bellies with some of the mouth-watering local foods at this year's 60th anniversary Festival Food, Arts and Crafts Fair. Festival royalty and dignitaries came together to cut the ribbon on the festivities and celebrated this year's honoree, Lena Schulterbrand. News 2's Janisha John brings us more from this year's food fair. The scent of local Crucian cuisine filled the town of Fredericksted Wednesday afternoon as Crucian Christmas Festival royalty and dignitaries came together to celebrate history, cutting the ribbon to officially open the 60th anniversary Festival Food Fair. A very important day in part of our history and culture. We have the individuals prepare the food, we have the art and craft individuals here. We hope that all of the cultural delicacies and the cultural art, the music, that the young people understand that when you evolve in culture, you must understand the history. History and culture that was represented at the food fair by this year's honoree, Miss Lena Schulterbrandt, a woman who for years could be remembered for her contributions to local cuisine. Truly a pleasure for me to be here because I know Miss Schulterbrandt as a home economics teacher when I was in high school. And it's a pleasure for me to acknowledge her and acknowledge her contribution to a festival that now celebrates 60 years. As Ms. Schulterbrandt received gifts of appreciation from the festival committee, she also took the time to reminisce on her experiences with local food growing up, a time she said was all about sharing in the community. We did not ever think of ourselves alone. Whatever you had, you shared with everybody in that was around. While many could be found purchasing local drinks, desserts, and dishes like seafood callaloo, Ms. Schalterbrandt made sure to remind everyone to use our local foods as the basis. Janisha John, News 2. Well, the streets of Fredericksted was filled with thousands playing mass this Wednesday morning as many came ready to take part in the 60th anniversary Rosa Time Juve celebration. The sounds of bands like Styly Band, Fusion Band, Daddy Jones and crew, and several others filled the streets as hundreds flocked behind each band, throwing powder, water, and rags in the air. Juve morning was not only a memorable one, but it was a safe one as no incidents took place and everyone had a fun and festive time, making it a Juve morning for the record books. Festival Village is where everyone will be. Reggae Night is on tap at 8 p.m. at, and then on Thursday, January 3rd, Latin Night heats up, heats things up again at the Frederick Said Village at 6 p.m. It's also also the night of the Calypso Monarch Finals at 8 p.m. at Island Center, the Children's Parade on July 4th, and the Adults Parade is on tap for January 5th. Then for the finale, fireworks light up the skies at 8 p.m. at the Frederick Said Village. And be sure to tune in to News 2 on Thursday, January 3rd for the Crucian Christmas Festival 60th Special. We look back at some of this year's festival events leading up to the grand finale, also at 7 p.m. and midnight. Plus, don't forget live coverage of the Children's Parade on January 4th and the Adults Parade on January 5th. Now, if you are participating in the parade, we need your help to make this 60th coverage the best ever. Please remember to send us your entry information. You can fax it to 713-0657, that's 713-0657, or you can drop it off before the parade begins. Well, in some other news, there have been community concerns that residents would have to go off island for, for surgical care after reports that the surgical unit at the Juan Louis Hospital was closed. Hospital officials spoke with News 2's Erica Parsons and assured us that the unit is open and functioning. Juan Louis Hospital Surgical Unit was moved December 17th to a newly renovated wing. The renovation was um, required part of our CMS um, compliance issues we were having with the unit. So once the renovations were completed, the surgical unit was moved back upstairs from the second floor back up to the third floor. Officials say the surgical unit has been moved and not closed as previously reported and moving the surgical unit to the third floor they say eliminates some of the nursing challenges posed by having the medical surgical unit on two separate floors. We've merged the med surge units and 
part of the merger was to better uh, facilitate the staff when they were at the two locations. It was a little hardship on them. It challenged the division of the staffing. But because we've now merged to one med surge unit, we can better allocate the staffing for the patients, provide better care, there would be better patient safety involved. Officials confirmed that there are nursing staff challenges, but that wasn't the reason for the move. Other media outlets reported that combining the medical and surgical unit on one floor resulted in the loss of beds and longer waiting times in the emergency room. With the move, they're down two beds. Hospital officials also tracked their wait times monthly and showed little difference between now and this time last year. Because of our Meditech system, we are able to track from for on a monthly basis. So we have data from January to December, and there's no significant change prior to the uh, layoffs in February. It's an overall six-hour um, length of stay for the emergency room patients. As for concerns that the operating room has been affected. Since we had the um, elimination of staff, we've never had any day where the operating room has not been in use. It's open today. Erica Parsons, News 2. Hospital officials also noted that Fast Track is open to see patients from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There were some nursing challenges on December 18th, which caused patients to be seen in the ER, but everything is back to normal. Well, a new year has brought new bundles of joy already in the territory. On St. Thomas, the territory's second-born baby of the year was born at about 3 p.m. on Tuesday, January 1st. The mother, Jolene Shanleyverin, has not yet named her baby, who was born 8 pounds, 10.2 ounces, measuring 20.75 inches. It's the first time that Chen Leverin is a mother. Congratulations. Now the territory's first baby of 2013 was born on St. Croix early Tuesday. Sani Rezion Stapleton made her appearance at 1.57 a.m. at the Juan Louis Hospital and weighed in at 5 pounds 10 ounces. She's a mother's fourth child and her early arrival was a bit of a surprise for mom Jocelyn Rodriguez who wasn't due until the 17th. Hospital officials and a representative from the New Horizons Women's Democratic Club showered new mom and baby with lots of gifts and baby essentials. The VI Supreme Court bill is now law. President Obama signed the bill late last week that was sponsored by Congresswoman Donna Christensen. The new law amends the VI's revised Organic Act so that local Supreme Court decisions will be reviewed directly by the U.S. Supreme Court and removing the temporary jurisdiction of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. Christensen said Saturday she is pleased that the Virgin Islands has taken another step towards self-governance, one that our local judiciary has worked hard to attain. As Congress in the final hours pulled away from the fiscal cliff, the House of Representatives was able to pass the Virgin Islands rum coverover and extend it for two more years. What does this mean for the territory and what could have happened had it not been passed? News to Zalson Bornvenek has that story. The country's fiscal cliff was taken all the way to the edge until a January 1st vote avoided automatic middle class tax hikes and spending cuts. I'd like to be speaking for this bill, but I can't. And in that vote, the territory's rum cover over was extended for two more years. When the final agreement was passed by the Senate and it was coming over to the House, they was out amending it. And so, yes, we were concerned because there have been questions raised in the past at other, especially at the last extension, about the rum cover over. When the Rules Committee of the House was unable to file an amendment and have the votes to have it passed, and they decided to just put the Senate version on the floor, then we started to breathe a lot easier. Delegate Donna Christensen said that the House voted 257 to 167 to pass the Senate tax agreement, which included the VI's rum cover over from $10.50 to $13.25. Benefits of the rum cover over include generating approximately $100 million a year for the territory, which go towards supporting capital projects and floating bonds. If we did not get that extended, the Virgin Islands government might have, would have had to pay back, um, I don't remember the exact amount, but would have had to pay back tens of millions of dollars to the federal government. 
While delegate Donna Christensen says she's pleased with the overall agreement, she says she's concerned about the two-month extension to deal with spending cuts and that possibly it could come from Medicare, Medicaid or Social Security. For News 2, I'm Allison Born vanak the two-year extension on the rum cover includes 2012 and will go through 2013. Well, this is the last day of the 112th Congress. Last night, lawmakers passed a measure preventing automatic tax hikes from hitting millions of Americans. But the deal did not include spending cuts and lawmakers will soon be fighting over the debt again. Tara Merginder is on Capitol Hill with the latest. President Obama landed in Hawaii this morning to resume his holiday vacation. He left Washington late last night after lawmakers approved a bill that prevents a middle-class tax hike and delays automatic spending cuts. Congress and the White House struggled to get the deal done, and neither Republicans or Democrats seem pleased with the outcome. Someone stopped hitting you in the head with a hammer, and you're supposed to say thank you so much for the relief. Many voters are upset it took lawmakers so long to reach a compromise. I think uh, we needed a deal. I'm not necessarily altogether happy. The measure raises taxes on families making more than $450,000 a year and extends long-term jobless benefits for a year. But the package does not include spending cuts, and many Republicans voted against it. I'd like to be speaking for this bill, but I can't. Congress steered away from this fiscal cliff at the last minute, but another showdown is just around the corner. In two months, the Treasury will need to increase how much the country can borrow, and lawmakers must approve it. The last time Congress fought over the debt ceiling, America's credit rating was downgraded. The president says that doesn't need to happen again. Seeing if we can put a package like this together uh, with a little bit less drama, a little less brinksmanship. The president will be trying to reach a debt ceiling deal with a new Congress. Winners from the November election will be sworn in tomorrow. Meanwhile, keeping our eye on the economy, Washington leaders decided to discontinue the Social Security tax cut enacted two years ago. The so-called payroll tax will rise from 4.2 percent to 6.2 percent. It appears the House will not vote on a measure providing aid to victims of Hurricane Sandy. The Senate passed the $60 billion measure on Friday. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank's Stock Market Watch. The Dow up 308, NASDAQ 92, S&P 36. Coming up on News 2, it's life, camera, and action for this young team from the VI that relocated to Orlando. They say it's all about getting in gear for the big picture and putting the VI on the map. Innovative customers will see a decrease in the Federal Universal Service Charge, also known as the FUSC charge, that went into effect on January 1st from 17.4% to 16.1%. This means that for residential telephone customers and single-line business subscribers, the FUSC charge will decrease from $1.20 to $1.18. Multi-line telephone business subscribers will see a decrease of $1.72 to $1.66. The charge recovers costs associated with innovative telephones contributions to the Federal Universal Fund. Golden Grove prisoners continue to be on lockdown. Bureau of Corrections Acting Director Basil Richard said in a press statement issued Friday that the facility will be on full cell restriction lockdown until further notice. Officials say it's in response to some inmates appearing inappropriately on a social media website and the action is necessary to keep both prisoners and personnel safe. Work details and work release programs have been sus suspended as well as all visitations during the lockdown. Three men were arrested in connection with a shootout at the back of the Fredericksted Mini Village on Monday night. Julian Vera Jr., 20 of Estate Strawberry, Adrian Gerard, 23 of JFK Housing Community, and Adol Fleming, 20 of Estate Catherine's Rest. Police say they exchanged gunfire in a possible retaliation with several other persons who police are presently searching for. Police gave chase and eventually stopped their car on the highway. Vera received a gunshot wound in his leg as well as a woman bystander. The shooting also left many vehicles damaged. 
in its path. The men were charged with endangerment and possession of unlicensed firearm, among others. Well, last month, I had the opportunity to meet up with some young men, members of Gears Production in Orlando, a team who relocated to the area from the VI last year. In an attempt to take it to the limit, I caught up with two members who gave an update on their journey. What is the end result of talented individuals with the same goal in mind, merging their skills together to form one team? A team that is geared towards creativity and professionalism. Meet the members of Gears Production. Gears is actually an acronym for Graphics, Entertainment, Art, Rhythm and Style. Tony and Celestino are two members of the Gears production team. They left the VI last year and headed for the big city. Each of us individually did our own thing like prior to forming Gears. We all had our own craft and we had our own like little companies on the side. He was um, doing yeah, VI, VI about, yeah, and I was doing TBL productions. I was doing work with Hasbro Studio. Um, and Makisa was doing work with CHS. He teaches over there and Kevin was doing his own thing. So we all kind of had our own feels, but we used to we used to do a lot of work together. Mm -hmm. So that kind of formed into a relationship where we would always be utilizing each other's services for our individual projects. So we kind of came up with this idea that let's reach out to the group that we have. Let's let's take that group and let's reach out to new minds, new creative minds that we know that's doing what we do on the island, mm -hmm. and like just find the best of the best and make like a super team. But initially, it wasn't all lights, camera, and action. Yeah, it was a long journey. Um, we yes. started in New York, and um, we got all of our equipment. We got an investment, mm -hmm. and we got all of our equipment from New York. And we decided to do a road trip and explore the different states. And that's what <laughs> we did. We went from New York, we went to New Jersey. Um, we stayed by friends and family. But now, they're on a roll, and services have expanded to include more than just videos commercials to vocal recording and much more. We we networked a lot. We networked with um, Planet VI, aka Rock City. Um, Benny D. Benny D. Yeah, um, we actually was with reverse videotaping like the first week we were up here. Um, it's all about networking. This this road isn't like easy, is pretty, is a bumpy road, but you have to find that, you know, that medium where you can actually survive. The guys say they miss home but had to leave home to spread their wings, but they plan to stay connected to the Virgin Islands. Like, I love these guys, like my brothers, like, they, they made the sacrifice and they gave it all up to come to Orlando instead of moving to, like, Atlanta or New York or L.A. and I work in, you know, over, over a different city with them. They decided to just pack up and come with me and kind of like take the sacrifice of being here and that's one thing I could say like I always respect them for that you know. Well the team has produced music videos from Ayaz, Diction, Shada and much more. You can log on to Gears at GearsProduction.com or Gears Production on Facebook to check out their work. Well you're ready to release some holiday stress? Time to laugh it off. Stars Nightclub is featuring comedians J.R. Brow and Tommy Thompson. J.R. Brown is a comedy composer who draws from his eclectic 19-year collection of jokes, impressions, music, and characters covering relationships, politics, religion, current events, and pop culture. Meanwhile, Tommy Thompson dishes out the comedy last with a distinct style of storytelling perspective. You can expect to laugh nonstop. Now, that's at 9 p.m. this Friday, January 4th, and Saturday, January 5th at 7 and 9 p.m. Stars gives the comedians featured on Comedy Central, The Late Show with David Letterman, The Tonight Show, and HBO a chance to shine in the VI. Stick around, your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.